I got commissioned to make an Earthbreaker hammer. This is my Earthbreaker hammer, and it's uh, three quarters of the way done. But you see something's missing, and that's the cones. There's four cone. Uh, there are four cones on each side of the Earthbreaker hammer, and I needed to come up with a cone to um, put on there. And I couldn't find anything that taught me a really simple easy cone or anything that really fit exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm going to show you. Alright, so here we have the basic elements to make a cone. Um, I made a very simple cone. All I did was, and in this case I'm not going to make the full size cone like this here. Um, this is my template that I made off of and try to find it somewhere right here in the middle, somewhere where I can make a nice big circle. And put this away. So you take your circle, find your center point, and I like to, I like to highlight the center point because it's tiny and it's kind of dark, so I'm just going to highlight it so I know exactly where it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a wedge out of this. And I'm just going to take a pie shape just straight in from the edge. You don't have to be really perfect with this. Matter of fact, I'm going to take a little bit more because I know I'm not, I want something a little more aggressive. And then just discard that. And then you take your wedge and then just lay it over itself. until, And then just keep turning it until you get the cone that you want. And when you get close, now obviously this is smaller than the one I wanted, but when you get close to where you want to be, just kind of go, okay, well that's about, and you tweak it a little bit more, and like, okay, if you want a little more aggressive cone, maybe a little higher pitch, just keep turning it, okay, just turn it inside itself, and that's all I'm doing, I'm simply just turning it inside itself, and then, I'm like, all right, that, I think that's good, and then just cut right on the line, straight to the center. So what we're going to use, we're going to use this portion here. Now in this case I used this, um, and I'll, I'll flash to that. Oof, oof, magic, it's bigger. And then I traced that out on um, EVA foam, and I traced it on one side. And then what I did is I did a diagonal cut, uh, or a 45 degree cut on the back side of uh, on the outside ring, and that'll give it the ability to lay to stand flat. So this is pretty flat. See that? It's pretty flat, and it lays down really well. So when you glue it, you'll have a really good surface. But the key to all this has absolutely nothing to do with any of that. It has everything to do with the grind. Um, and I'm going to show you that real quickly. I'm going to don my mask because, well, I like to breathe and. Well, that stuff is uh, not real pleasant to breathe. So, in the interest of being heard, I'll try to do this a little bit. Well, I've got I've got a coarse bit on here, and because I want to take off quite a bit of material, and I don't have to be real careful, um, and I don't have to real you know to be baby because everything I'm going to grind is going to be on the inside, so you're not going to see it anyways. So. So you're going to grind, you're going to smooth out this outside edge, and you can see that I've smoothed it out on these here. But the real trick is really is right here, right on this point. And you see how how thin that point is. See how I narrowed that down, and that's the key. That's the key to getting a good sharp tip. Um, if you glue that down properly, it'll do a really good job. So without any further fanfare. Back on with the mask because your know, breathing is something I like to do. Now you want to go with the grain right here because you want that to be nice and uh, clean and, and predictable. If you go back against it, it's going to carve really deep into the foam, so you got to be careful about that. Now that I've got that edge cut down a little bit, what I'm going to do 
and you see that I've narrowed that edge by almost half. I'm going to trim down the the the. I'm going to trim this part right here, and all of this is going to go really thin. And I'm going to trim it down very very thin. And I'm going to make a line here. I'm not. I don't actually do this for the most part because I just kind of eyeball it. But I make the line like right through here, and just get this nice and thin, like that. And we're going to take all that material off. We're going to take all that material out of there, so we can fold it properly. Okay, so once you've got that done, just take a quick look at it, make sure it's nice and good, and then I'm going to heat it up with a heat gun. That's the next step. Got my handy dandy heat gun. And heat that up nice and thoroughly. You want to heat seal the edge because that's where your balloon surface is going to be, so you want to make sure absolutely to heat seal the edges and the inside here. And then we'll turn it over and get the back side. Get it nice and pliable. Now that it's nice and pliable, I'm going to roll it just to try to get that general shape. And you can just roll it onto itself like so. Um, and it'll start that cone shape, and that's, you want it to cool in this general configuration, right? So that's going to give you a, a nice cylinder. And then uh, I'm going to do that with the rest of them, and I'll edit that out soon. Yeah, let's see. All right, as you can see here, I've got four um, cones. They are ready to become cones, or pre-cones, I guess. i got uh, glue. This is uh, Weldwood contact cement. Uh, I can't get barge here. Um, I don't live in the continental United States, so a barge is very, very expensive. And they most places won't ship it here. Whether you're continental or not, they don't really care. So if you're in the 49th state, like I am, they... Uh, I don't much care. Then I'm going I'm to put some glue right inside of that and see that I put some in there and I want that, I want it to be on the edge and I want it to be in there as well. And the reason I want it to be in there is because it'll actually soften the foam in there and that comes in handy uh, when you're Uh, you see I have a couple cutting mats. These are some cheap cutting mats that I got from I don't know where. The reason I have them is because the glue will actually um, eat the lines. They, the, not the lines, but the color. So the ink will come off of the my good cutting mat. And I use my cutting mat for um, cutting, but I also use it for measuring, and so I don't. I can use it to eyeball size. So I really don't want the lines to be all messed up. So I use these mats. It's very very easy. Uh, I like this Wellwood contact cement. It's thin. It's pliable. I've never had any problem with it breaking, but I haven't been doing this for a tremendous long time, just a couple of years now. So if uh, it breaks down over time, I don't know it yet, um, but uh, I know that in my little over two years of doing this stuff, it hasn't really given me any trouble. Done with this, into the refuse you go, and now we will wait the allocated amount of time. Okay, the allocated amount of time has expired. This is still a little bit sticky. 
Not too bad. I want to dry it out just a smidge more. You do use a blow dryer, and I use uh, I use this fairly often. Don't get too close. It'll blister the paint, or sorry, this it'll blister the glue, and the glue fails. So don't do that. All right. So the allocated amount of time has expired. Um, these are just about perfect. So um, first things first, just line up your bottom here. I like to give the inside edge, it looks kind of like a, a teepee or just line them up, let them come together. And if you push in here, they'll kind of just line themselves up, which is really nice. And then as it lines up, just continue to let it do its job because it really naturally just kind of wants to come together when you push in like that. So just let it do it. And then this is the only real complicated part. And this is when you get to um, the cap here. And then if you just continue to do what you were doing and just push it in, it will really just do all the work itself. So just push in push in, just let it do what it's going to do naturally, and then just give it a quick little pull, and ta-da, actually really, really nice, a little bit of edge there, but we'll be able to clean that up. Good thing about the Earthbreaker hammer is all of these cones are are ground up, right? They're a little chewy. We've got a little uh, little edge on them, so you can just let them be that way. So a little bit of damage doesn't hurt anybody. It definitely doesn't hurt you. You got some pretty good points there. Some nice cone. Uh, good sharp tips there. A little bit of cleanup here. That's uh, a nothing, super easy job to do. In this particular case, we won't have to do a whole lot of cleanup because, well, you know, since they are a little chewy and they've got a little love on them, they've got a little age to them, it's not going to hurt anything. But what's really nice is when you soften that, when you stuck that glue, you can actually bring that, that extra glue that we put on that cat, on that tip that's on there, um, actually brings that in nice and tight so that uh, that cap won't. The, won't uh, the tip won't come apart that's really really nice so that's uh one two three four five six seven eight that's uh eight earthbreaker cones i'm gonna clean them up a little bit give them a little bit of love hit them with the sander and uh we'll be done but very very easy to do i'll uh, i'll give you a little brief what's over i'm gonna use some uh, quick seal. I use some quick seal. Thank you, Evil Ted, for that. Also, I really, really love this stuff. This is Rapid Fill. I got this from uh, TNT Cosplay. Uh, it uh, kind of I've got the Rapid Fill, and I also have the Fine Finish. I don't know where it is, but uh, I got the Fine Finish. Fills them in really nice. Uh, again, I won't have to use so much of that on here. It's actually going to give me a nice clean surface when it's all said and done because I'm going to be able to carve into these. These are going to be nice and carved up and I will apply them all to the Earthbreaker hammer. Just a little quick preview of what it's going to look like. Like that. Bam. Earthbreaker hammer. Guys, thanks for paying attention. I do have an Instagram page. You it can visit me at the Mimics Forge, Mimics, M-I-M-I-C-S, Forge. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, Mimics Forge, as well there. I, uh, I created it because I thought this stuff was cool. I really, really enjoy doing this stuff. If you have any suggestions, any questions, I just want a few more videos. You want to see how I did some of the other stuff that I did? Uh, drop me a line. Thanks. Appreciate you stopping in.